Costanja Belisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV in my native language. Di da da, di da 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 da, da da dit, dit 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 da. Here to talk about the ZEP antenna some more, and in particular the pure ZEP antenna, which was described in a previous video. The pure ZEP antenna is just like this one, except all of the um, feed line and radiating element lie in a single straight line. And I remarked that you'd probably have to live in a tree in order to make that work because your radio would have to be at a substantial elevation above the ground or the surface of the earth. Well, uh, the same viewer remarked that, uh, well, he can't do that, obviously, but he can bend it down and run it vertically to his radio. And that's about 33 feet here, uh, this length, a quarter of a wavelength at 7.040 uh, megahertz. It's about 33 feet. 33 feet 5 inches or something like that uh, according to our idealistic calculations in the previous video. I'm using the same examples for impedances which are purely resistive. R sub A which is a the re purely resistive impedance at the antenna end is uh, assumed to be 4,500 ohms, although that's very difficult to predict what this is going to be. The length that we had assumed here was something like 66 feet 3 inches or 66 feet 6 inches, something like that. But those numbers would have to be tweaked uh, by experimentation and of course we may not get the 4500 ohms here. R sub F is the resistance or characteristic impedance Z sub 0 of the feed line which is 450 ohms. This is ladder line 450 ohm ladder line very low loss and uh, the viewer wants to connect it directly to his radio, no tuner involved. So you would connect this shorter end, the quarter wavelength uh, wire, to the shield part of the coaxial cable output connector on the radio and stuff the longer part, which is three quarters of a wavelength if you add up the total length a half a wavelength here and a quarter of a wavelength there. You'd stuff the end of that into the center conductor uh, part of the PL259 for the radio. The crystals are cut for 7.040 megahertz. We have a QRP enthusiast on our hands because this radio is crystal controlled and runs only one half of a watt. So I, I don't know where uh, our viewer got the idea that the um, three element Yagi at W1AW when I worked there in the 70s uh, with uh, uh, two or three watts produced all these contacts. I don't know where he got the idea that to uh, of a ZEP antenna. I mean, if you want to, if you want to get a tower and a three-element Yagi and spend twenty-five thousand, thirty-five thousand dollars on it, and then run this little QRP radio into it, you're gonna, you're probably gonna make quite a lot of contacts. But uh, it's kind of a lopsided arrangement, wouldn't you say? I mean, almost all of your expense going into your antenna, but such is the Zen of antennas the Zen. That's kind of thick writing, but you can get the idea. The Zen of antenna
practicality or impracticality or a dream world that's that's the word a dream world but there you have it a half a wavelength wire and it has to be exactly a half a wavelength a quarter of a wavelength feed line or matching section which has to be exactly a quarter of a wavelength it can't uh, depart from that and then at the radio I don't know what we call that uh, impedance here R sub R most radios want 50 ohms but here what we're going to see according to this theory is 45 ohms that's pretty doggone close to 50 ohms so you're going to get a pretty pretty close one-to-one -one match but that again is all predicated on this number and also on well this number we have control over so it's predicated mainly on this number and um, we really don't know what that is but we know that the characteristic impedance of the transmission line R sub F will equal the geometric mean of R sub A and R sub R. Uh, so you can kind of work around with the mathematics. I'm not going to do that here though. It, it'll bore you and waste your time and besides I'm <laughs> probably I'd probably get lost and mixed up myself anyway doing that uh, to use other examples. If this were a smaller impedance right here and this was the same then you'd get a larger impedance here but this could be as little as half and I think you'd get a, still get a pretty good match so there's a pretty wide range where you can get at least a two to one match here and there's no essentially no feed line loss because this uh, while technically a feed line it's also technically not a feed line that's the Zen of antenna theory. It's a contradiction in itself. But that's the almost pure zip, which is a whole lot more practical if you want to operate your radio in a regular radio shack instead of a tree house. Although doing it, uh, building a tree house for your ham radio um, would certainly make a good, uh, a good story, wouldn't it? Stan Jibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 for now, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long, which in my native language sounds like da 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 da. -da.